be. Oh, I guess I'll buy a pencil. Leaded or unleaded? An unleaded pencil? Okay, so they're a little more expensive, but they protect the environment. Wow. Oop. Hi, Ira. And how may I help you, sir? Well, I'm not sure yet. Well, then might I suggest a slide rule? It's essential to the study of trigonometry. But I don't study trigonometry. I can't even spell it. Well, then you'll also be needing this dictionary. <laughs> oh, well, okay. This business could be a lot more fun if all my customers didn't look so depressed. I guess it's only natural when you're going back to school. Yeah, only an idiot could feel happy at the end of summer vacation. <laughs> Yeah. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. I'm going to brush all my cares away. dee 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 hallelujah dee dum dee dum dum I see what you mean. Hi, Marsha. Hi, Ira. <gasps> Wonderful day. Maybe he's one of those freaks that likes the smell of used school supplies. Well, what be this year, Arthur? Nothing for me, thanks. Arthur, you need school supplies. You're going back to school on Monday. So it might seem to the casual observer. Actually, <coughs> I have decided not to go back to school. What? Nope, I'm handing in my resignation. You're not going back to school? No, I'm not. In fact, I'm donating my running shoes with the training wheels to some deserving student. You are serious? Sure. Come on, Arthur, you're putting us on. No, I'm not. Summer vacation was so great, I've decided to devote my entire life to it. I'm going to spend the first 20 years at the beach and the next 10 years at the zoo, and after that... Hold I... it, Arthur! What are you talking about? That's not the way it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, none of us are crazy about school. But let's face it, it's an unavoidable part of life. For grown-ups, there's death and taxes. And for us kids, there's school. Besides, when people leave school, it isn't all fun and games. They have to go to work for a living. Work? <laughs> they do? Sure. You have to contribute to society in some way. Contribute to society? Uh, okay, I'll be a brain surgeon. Oh. <laughs> you need a lot more school for that. How come? I've got a good, solid third grade education behind me. That's not enough to be a brain surgeon, bozo. Oh. <laughs> then I'll be president. Oh. You have to be 35 to be president. Yeah. Boy, they get you coming and going. Oh, well, I'll find something. One thing's for sure, though. I'm not going back to school. But that's not fair to me! Why do you say that? Because without you there, he's gonna be the dumbest kid in the school. Oh, I see. <sighs> Well, summer vacation is almost over. My troops will be back on Monday. Mr. Grimace, I have some disturbing news. I've heard that Arthur Strim doesn't want to come back to school. Why, that's terrible. A deserter at the 11th hour, just when the attack on stupidity begins. There must be a way we can get him to come back to school. I believe we should offer a generous reward to the one who brings Arthur back. Alive or otherwise. Mr. Grimace, I don't think a reward will really be necessary. Trust me. Oh, I thought I heard voices. Hi, Francine. What are you doing here? School doesn't start until Monday. <laughs> I know, Miss Peach. I always come in a few days early to decorate. Decorate? What do you mean by that? Well, I like to bring a few things from home to make myself more comfortable. A picture of my mom and dad, my creeping Charlie, my princess phone. Really making yourself at home, aren't you? Well, it kind of reduces the culture shock. Francine, are you aware that Arthur isn't planning to come back to school? Oh, can I use his desk for my tea set? He may not be planning on coming back, but I'm planning on having him back. Francine. Yes, Mr. Grimace? I want you to take a message to the other students. Whoever can convince Arthur, by fair means or foul, to return to school 
will receive a magnificent reward. Oh. And whoever brings Arthur back will get the reward. Reward? I turn my mother in for a reward. I wonder what it is. Oh, well, I hope it's that red 10-speed bike I saw in the store window. And a trip to Europe where I can race it in the Grand Prix. Flown there in my own Lear jet. Oh, with a complete wardrobe by Givenchy of Paris. So I will look my best when I am introduced to the crown prince of Europe, who will sweep me off my feet and carry me away to a completely staffed, fully winterized chateau overlooking beautiful downtown Switzerland. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever the reward is, I want it. Hmm. Oh, if only Arthur knew his days of freedom are numbered. It wouldn't matter. He can't count anyhow. <laughs> Next patient, please. Arthur! Turkey! Oh! <laughs> Turkey! Arthur! Oh, gee, it's good to see you. Well, I must say, I did not know you were a veterinarian, sure. Arthur, but I am certainly glad I, like the one I used to go to, was no good. Why not? Because in 15 years, he never found anything seriously wrong with me. Oh, well, our motto here is, if you don't see the disease you like, ask for it. So, what's the trouble? Everything's the trouble. My back, my feet, my wings, my beak. If I felt any better, I'd be the world's sickest turkey. Turkey? Are you a hypochondriac? No, that's the one thing I'm not suffering from. Oh, well, you've been here 10 minutes, so that rules out the two-minute virus. Save me, doctor. Make me well, eh? Physician, kill thy turkey. Uh, okay, uh, just a minute. I'll tell you what you should do. Here, take two of these and uh, call me in the morning. What are they? Oh, those are just candy. But you're going to think they're medicine and get all better. Uh, oh, I shouldn't order have said that. Lucky for you, my hearing is shot also. <laughs> Goodbye, Arthur. Goodbye, turkey. And if you don't feel any better, come back Tuesday. I'll probably drop dead by Tuesday. If that happens, come back Monday. <laughs> Arthur, as my cousin the duck would say. Yes? You're a quack. <laughs> I'm a... I'm, I'm a quack. Oh, he's right. Who am I fooling? Marcia, Marcia, I've got a good plan. Shh, shh, now you let me do the talking. No, take your pets elsewhere. I'm leaving the business. Arthur, why in the world did you decide to become an animal doctor? Well, I thought it made more sense than being an animal lawyer. More animals get sick than sued. Forget this nonsense. Now you come back to school with the rest of us. Yo, Arthur, if you come back to school, I'll help you with your spelling lesson. I don't need help with my spelling, and I'm never going back. N E V U R never. Listen, listen. With these tactics, you're merely descending to his level. This calls for the psychological approach. Watch me. Arthur, you come back to school or I'll put you in your worthless nose. No, I'm sorry, Marsha. And, and even though I'm terrified by your threats, I have an inner strength which will not let me stray from the path I have chosen. And that path is the one that leads away from school and down to the old swimming hole. That's the trouble with you, Arthur. You're too dumb to be intimidated. <laughs> yoo -hoo. Arthur. Darling. Oh, Arthur, it's just as I imagined your room might be. Simple and masculine. The masculine colors, the masculine decor, the masculine Barbie doll. Oh, no, that's my sister's Barbie doll. Mine broke last week. Oh, Arthur. I'm so glad we're not alone, or else I... I couldn't control myself. Uh, to what do I owe this, uh, so, uh sudden attention? Arthur, <laughs> it's just that I can't bear not sitting next to you in class. 
Oh, but Desdemona, you never wanted to sit next to me before. I didn't trust myself. Uh oh. But I'm a woman now and have decided to throw caution to the wind. <laughs> Arthur. <laughs> if you come back to school, yeah. I'll see to it that you sit next to me in class. Sit next to Close me. Close enough for me to touch your hand. My head. <laughs> to whisper things in your ear. <laughs> You mean like the answers to tests? Whatever turns you on. Gee, I, I didn't think you kids cared for me so much. I mean, such good friends. You know, maybe, maybe I should reconsider my decision and go back. Arthur! Arthur! Uh, Arthur! Arthur, I couldn't wait to tell you my great idea! Yeah, what? Oh, listen to this. If you let me bring you back to school, I'll give you half of my reward. That sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait a minute, what reward? Well, the reward Mr. Grimace is giving to whoever brings you back to school. Uh, th there's a reward? Yeah. You klutz. <laughs> You didn't all come simply because you cared? Face it, kid. It's a cold, cruel world out there. <laughs> and in here, too. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to be alone right now. I have some heart-wrenching sobbing to do. Oh, I didn't know nobody told me or nothing. <laughs> My history book. I'll never need you again. Good riddance. <laughs> Come in. The map of Europe I drew, containing more original countries than any other map. <sighs> Hello, Arthur. Your mother let me in. Oh, hi, Miss Peach. Be with you in a minute. I'm busy destroying my past. I hope you're not doing anything that you'll regret later. We have to do what we have to do. Arthur, I really wish you'd come back to school. I'm going to miss you very, very much. No, you can't fool me, Miss Peach. I know there's a reward out for me. Uh, I'm too young to have a price on my head. Oh, that silly reward. Yes, Arthur, there is a reward, but that's not the only reason they want you back. Mm. They care about you. No, they don't. They don't care about me at all. In, in fact, they ignore me. In, in that class, I'm like, like a freckle on a Dalmatian. If I can prove to you that they really miss you, would you come back? Yeah, well, how are you going to do that, Miss Peach? Monday is the first day of school. I'd like you to hide in the coat room and see for yourself what they think of you. Mm, nope, I can't do it. Monday, I was planning to pick up my brochures for Siberia. It would really mean a lot to me. Mm, I, uh... Okay, Miss Peach, <laughs> I'll do it for you. But I'll tell you, it's not going to work. No, no, no. <laughs> Good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Peach. <laughs> Welcome back. I think by now you've all noticed the empty desk in the middle of the room, and I'm sure you all know to whom it once belonged. Therefore, as your first assignment of this school year, I'd like each of you to rise and tell us how you feel about the fact that Arthur Strim has not come back to school. Me first, okay, me first, me first. Uh-oh. Here comes the bad news. Yo! Farley Snedeker here, and I miss Arthur Strim because any kid who doesn't mind being punched out once a week is okay in my book. <laughs> Linda, would you like to be next? Mm -hmm. I always thought of Arthur Strim who sat beside me all these years as an annoying little twerp. 
but I kind of miss him. Because when Mr. Grinnis wasn't talking, I could always depend on Arthur to loan me into a glassy-eyed stupor. Hey, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to pick up your coat till three o'clock. Shh, 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 shh. Uh, I'm sorry for the intrusion, Mouse, but I'm supposed to hide in here and listen to what they say about me. Wait a minute here. Aren't you Otter Strim? I mean, am I not correct in assuming that? The kid from the second row? Yes, sir. How did you know? You're the one who brings those terrific cheese sandwiches in his lunch. I always wondered what happened to them. So, uh, what do you think they're gonna say about you? <gasps> Terrible things. Shh. Listen. Well, I'm sad that Arthur Strim isn't around. I haven't felt this way since my beloved dog, Floppy, ran away. Gosh, I miss his long, droopy ears, his big brown eyes, and the cute way he used to fetch things. You really love that dog. I'm talking about Arthur. Now, that didn't sound so terrible. In fact, it's kind of heartwarming. Oh, you mice are just more sentimental than us people. Yeah, well... <laughs> I'm going to miss Arthur even more than you do. It may come as a surprise to you to learn that I was his intended. He intended to ask me to go study, and I intended to say yes when you get a lot richer and better looking. <laughs> but even though ugly and poverty-stricken, he was awfully sweet and lovable and scrumptious and luscious and sexy and, oh, he just drives me crazy. Oh, Desdemona. Va, 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 boom, this is quite a woman, Arthur. How can you restrain yourself? What? Uh, oh, um... <clears throat> She says that to all the boys. Arthur, I want you to know, wherever you are, that every year on the anniversary of your dropout, I shall put fresh flowers on your desk. Arthur Strim, may you rest in Disneyland. <laughs> I don't know what your problem is, kid. They really miss out there. <laughs> Don't be fooled, sir. We haven't heard from Marcia yet. She's the one who ignores me the most. <laughs> when she speaks, everybody listens. Silver tongue, is that what you're saying? Yeah, and an iron fist. Uh-huh. <laughs> Marcia Mason, do you have anything to say about Arthur? Of course I do, Miss Peach. I think Arthur Stream is dumb and funny looking. See, I told you. Two of the finest attributes you could want in a human being. And I'll tell you why. Dumb? Well, sometimes when a person is innocent, trusting, and honest, we think of him as being dumb. Well, this would be a better world if everyone were as dumb as Arthur Strim. <laughs> funny looking? That's a wonderful thing. Standing here before you alone, I'm obviously beautiful. <laughs> ah, but when I stood next to Arthur, I was ravishing. Oh. <laughs> Arthur dedicated his whole life to going around and standing next to people so that they might benefit from the comparison. It takes a lot of character to make that kind of sacrifice. I, for one, miss Arthur terribly. Oh. I never told him how deeply I truly felt about him while he was here. And now, it's too late. Too late. <laughs> they care about me. They care about me. Why didn't I tell you, Arthur? Did I not know it all the time or what? <laughs> you did. Uh, oh, do you think I should go out there? Of course you should, for heaven's sakes. Fill the lines with joy. Get out there. Oh, go. No, oh, don't, oh, don't open the door. Open the door first and make an appearance. It's me. I'm here. Your old buddy, Arthur Strim. You don't have to miss me anymore. Can't you see I haven't finished my speech? <laughs> Arthur, you are so annoying. Oh, thank you, Marcia. I know you meant that in a good way. Arthur, it's good to have you back. Yay! Yay! Hip -hip! Yay! Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> oh, Arthur, I'm 
I'm glad you've returned. What would the war on ignorance be without you? <laughs> Whichever student was responsible for bringing Arthur back to school is eligible for the magnificent reward. It was me, Mr. Grimace. Actually, Mr. Grimace, you might say that all the children brought Arthur back. Oh, I see. Um, well, the magnificent reward was going to be dinner with Mrs. Grimace and myself and the rare opportunity to listen uninterrupted to my life story. Oh. <laughs> However, due to the unfortunate state of the economy, I can't afford to feed all of you. Therefore, the magnificent reward is hereby canceled. Hooray! <laughs> Dinner? Canceled? Oh, no need for that, for heaven's sake. Actually, I was the one who got Arthur back into class. Tell him, Arthur. That's right, Mr. Grimace, and am I happy he did. Now, I can continue my education and go on to college and maybe even learn how to read. <laughs> Take him home. At our house, we do not serve dinner to rodents. However, I will reward him with my life story. It all started out when I was born back in 1930 in Neanderthal camp. I came from a family of rail splitters and I split rail This is the first time he's ever had an audience in the palm of his hand. <laughs> <laughs>